This is the third lecture over quadratic functions for Math 107, Chapter 2. Here's an example of using the discriminant to find the types of roots. For review, the types of roots are two equal roots. I should have written the discriminant or the, written the other way first. Two real distinct roots. Two real equal roots or complex conjugate pair. And from the quadratic function minus b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, these three roots can be sorted out by looking at b squared the discrim minus 4ac, which is the discriminant. If that's greater than 0, you get two real distinct roots. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, the roots are equal. If b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, the roots are complex. Let's say the equation is y is equal to 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. I'm looking for roots, so I'm really looking for the solution of the equation 0 equals 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. Now I want to look at b squared minus 4ac. b is 2, a is 6, and c is negative 4. So plugging that in, I would have 2 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 4 which is 4 minus 96, which gives me negative 92. This is less than 0, so the roots are a complex conjugate pair. Right. So now we'll look at another example. Let's say y is equal to, oh, didn't get the pen, sorry. So y is equal to, say, negative x squared plus 3x minus 2. In this case, a is minus 1, the parabola opening down, b is 3, and c is minus 2. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, that would be 9 minus 4 times a negative 1 times a negative 2, that's 5. It's greater than 0, so the roots are two real distinct values. So there's two real distinct roots. And now an example of the third case. Let's let y equals 5x squared hmm, plus 10x plus 5. Okay. So b squared minus 4ac, b is 10, so that's 10 squared, minus 4 times 5 times 5, and that turns out to be 0. Equals 0. So this case has two real equal roots. So in summary, when you have the equation, whoa, sorry, when you have the equation in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, you can use the term under the square root sign in the quadratic function, and that term is b squared minus 4ac, to figure out ahead of time what kind of roots you're going to get. Now for this next example, I want to show you how to use the two roots to find h. I said in the second lecture you can find h as the average of the two roots if that's what you happen to know. So I'm going to write the equations, I'm going to write some uh, quadratic equation that's very easy to um, factor. And a particularly easy one, don't miss this, uh, it saves you a lot of time, is one in which there is no constant term. Let's say the equation looks like this, minus 5x squared 
plus 60x. Okay, you want to find the roots, set y equal to 0, and I have minus 5x squared plus 60x. This equation is very easy to factor. Anytime you don't have a constant term, you can factor out one of the variables. So I'll put that out here, x, and then I could, well, I'll write it a little different way. I'll go 60 minus 5x, right? I factored out one of the x's. Now I have it in factored form. Remember, when you solve this equation, there are three ways to do it. Factoring, completing the square, or using the quadratic function. If you can factor, do it, because that's the easiest thing, but only factor if it's easy. This is the case where it's very easy to factor. Pull out one of the x's. Now, once you've factored it, you set each term to 0. So setting the first factor to 0, I get the first root, which is 0. I set this term to 0 to get the second root. When I isolate the x, I have x is equal to 12. Those are my two roots. You see how I got them? I set each factor to 0. Each factor gave me one of the roots. All right, x1 is 0, x2 is 12. All right, what do I know about this parabola? Because this is negative, the term multiplying x squared is negative. It's a downgoing parabola. It has a root at 0 and a root at 12. Where is h? Let me just draw a little graph over here. So I have right here at 0 is one of the roots. 12 is another root. The h is halfway in between. 0 plus 12 over 2 equals 6. So here at 6 is the h value. This is h, this is x1, and this is x2. That's the h value for the vertex. What is k? I take this 6 and I plug it back into the original equation and find y. So y is equal to x is equal to k whenever h um, x is equal to h. So to find k, I put this back in the original equation, which would be minus 5 times 6 squared plus 60 times 6. And this is already worked out in the lecture notes and turns out to be 360. That's your k value. So you would go up here, up here to wherever 360 is. And here's your 6, and that's the vertex of this parabola. This parabola comes along here and crosses the x-axis at 0. And my great drawing skills here, it comes over and crosses at 12. A parabola opening down. The first root is 0. The second root is 12. The h is right in the middle between the two roots. Of the x, um, I'm sorry, yes, the h is right in the middle between the two roots. It is 6. You put the 6 back in the equation, and you find the height of that vertex, which is 360. And there's your point right there. hk is equal to six, time for him, I think six, three sixty. This situation occurs in the last problem in the homework. In that case, you're looking at um, the projectile that you um, okay. This is in general is the equation for the projectile. Y0 is the launch height. If you shoot it from the ground, I think in the, it was shooting bows and arrows in the homework, this is zero. Okay, that makes things easy. Here is the velocity of the arrow as it comes out of the bow. So that's velocity. The last term has to do with the acceleration due to gravity because gravity is pulling back down. You don't really understand this term until you get to calculus. Just accept it as it is. This is the acceleration due to gravity. And the units here are feet per second. So let me write the equation as though you're shooting this arrow from the ground, the launch height of zero. I have vt minus 16t squared. The independent variable is time. The dependent variable is y. And that's the height of the projectile. This is a setup, just like the one I did a minute ago, to factor. You factor out one of the t's, v minus 16t. Now when you solve, you're going to find the two times at which the arrow is on the ground. From this, one time it's on the ground is that t equals 0. Of course, you shot it from the ground. The other, you would set v minus 16t, and there's, of course, different values of v depending on the bow, and you find out 
equals, set that equal to 0, solve for t, this gives you the second root. t2 is going to be 16 divided by v. Obviously that was wrong. <laughs> t2 is equal to v divided by 16. Okay. And that will give you the second time that the arrow is on the ground. The coefficient of t squared is negative. It's a downgoing parabola. And just a little sketch here. Okay, so it's opening down. Here's the first root at t1. Here's the second root out here at t2. Its value is v over 16, depending on what the velocity is. Where is the peak? At what time does the arrow reach its peak? It will be halfway between these two times. So you take t1 and t2, average them, and you'll get h. You put h back in your original equation, this one, and you'll find out how high the arrow went. This doesn't have anything to do with the horizontal motion of the arrow. You have to wait to trig to do that. All we're looking at is the time it takes the arrow to get up to its peak and then return to the Earth. Here is the first example that's done in the homework for the problem of the arrow. In that case, the velocity is 88 feet per second. So the equation for the height of the arrow is, again, shooting from the, is 88t minus 16t squared. All right, I put the, the original equation, or in general equation, is vt minus 16t squared. So I replace the v with the 88, whatever the velocity is for that particular arrow. I want to find the times it's on the ground. So I set that equal to 0, and I have 88t minus 16t squared factor out a t. And get t is 88 minus 16 t. All right? Set each factor equal to 0. t1 equals 0. That just has to do with that. And the other factor is 88 minus 16 t is equal to 0. I solve for t here. And t2 is 88 divided by 16, which is 5 and a half seconds. Those are the two times the arrow's on the ground here, because you shot it from the ground here is when it returns to the ground. Its peak, the time to peak, is halfway between those. We'll call that h. I average that, those 0.55t over 2, and I get 2.75 seconds. And the question is, how high does the arrow go? So the height would be its value of y when t is h. When t is 2.25 seconds, to find that, this would be my k. I put the 2.75 back in the original equation, which would be 88, and time is 2.75 minus 16 times 2.75 squared. Work out the arithmetic there, and this arrow goes 121 feet in the air. We go to graph it look something like this, hopefully a lot better. Here's the 0. Here's a 5.5. Those are the two times the arrow's on the ground. Halfway between them at 2.75 is the time the arrow's at its peak. That's the h. And the arrow went 121 feet in the air uh, at its maximum. So we'll see how bad a job we can do with this. We go up, and it comes back down. And in that homework problem, you do a bunch of these and graph them all one on top of the other, and you can see how they'll fit together.